Hello everyone and welcome to your YouTube channel The SR Cut. Today we will take an in-depth look inside the first rebooted Tomb Raider game belonging to a part of new trilogy. One thing that I would like to clarify in the beginning of this video is that this is the first Tomb Raider game that I have ever played because most of the earlier titles in the franchise did not irk my interest and therefore I chose to avoid other games in the franchise mostly due to my personal taste. But with this title, I was easily sold into buying a copy due to the game being both grounded and offered up an origin story of the beloved and famed Miss Lara Croft, which meant that the new title had little to no ties with the past games in the franchise and did not rely on any convoluted lore to tell a story. The developers of the game Crystal Dynamics through their lots of hard work and dedication have finally came up with a product that is both fresh and original. So the story starts with her lead character Lara Croft along with a small crew are aboard a ship called Endurance and they are heading towards the southern coast of Japan in search for the lost kingdom of Yamatai, once ruled by a powerful queen Himiko. The entire crew that were a part of this expedition were relying on this adventure to make a breakthrough discovery and land themselves both fortune and fame. But the land of Yamata is treacherous. It seems that anyone who dares to enter the border of this once magnificent land is caught up in a trap which prevents anyone from leaving this island. And after your ship is destroyed by a horrific storm, you are forcefully trapped by a force beyond anyone's comprehension. And due to a severe storm which destroyed endurance, the entire crew are caught up in this ordeal. And the only way to leave this accursed land is to solve a mystery that is somehow linked with unnatural storms and thunders, which prevents anyone and anything that tries to leave the land. And having trapped in an island filled with crazy people is one of the other reasons to leave this cursed land. These men are led by a man of dubious morals, Father Matthias. The most obvious attraction of the game is the way the game's lead character, Lara Croft, is portrayed. She aspires to be an exceptional explorer, just like her father and wants to make a name for herself. But she, in this game, which is an origin story of her adventures, is still learning the ropes. And during the game's opening chapters, she goes through the pain which is unimaginable. She is good with climbing, exploration and occasional hunting. But she is not used to killing men. But having the entire force of nature and those crazy islanders against her, she is forced to adapt to the situation at hand and must do things, some willingly and some forcefully, just in order to survive. The story presented here is very well written and presented. Your crew members with what little time you spent with them are generally well done, with each member having their own unique traits and end goals. Most notably of which are, aside from Lara, Dr. Whitman, a self-proclaimed Mr. Know It All, who keeps on getting himself stuck up in tough situations due to his foolishness. And then there is Sam, who trusts Lara and her actions. And she is one of the few people that actually appreciates Lara's efforts. The majority of your game time will be spent either exploring your surroundings or getting into firefights with crazy islanders. Miss Croft it seems is an excellent climber and has access to some equipment like a climbing axe that enhances her mobility which she can use not only to climb the exposed vertical surfaces but she can also use it in combat provided you have invested in certain skill sets. Lara's in-game environmental awareness is referred to as survival instincts which aids you by highlighting special objects or items of interest that can be collected or manipulated to progress forward in the game. Survival instincts are mostly helpful while raiding the optional tombs and while hunting for resources. The optional tombs present in the game can be raided to acquire a bonus to the experience point earned. These tombs can be easily found by marching into an unbeaten path with each tomb requiring you to solve a unique puzzle. And after a set number of experience points are accumulated, the game will reward you with a skill point. These skill points can be then used to buy a number of top tiered abilities, all from the comfort of one of the Lara's makeshift camp. There are three separate skills categories that you can choose to master with each skill 
having its own set tiers of upgrades. You can invest the earned skill points in any category that best suits your playstyle. For example, if you want Lara to withstand a significant damage before succumbing to her wounds, you can easily invest your skill points in the brawler category. And coming across skill points in the game is somewhat easier and the game's progression system rewards you with appropriate perks which go a long way into making your playthrough more customized. Then the game has some tense and evenly spaced out combat sections where you can use your weapons like bow and arrow, pistols, assault rifles and shotguns. With each weapon in the game varying differently from one another, pistols have low rate of fire and are often used in short bursts to manage the gun's kickback. Shotguns in the game is really punchy in the short range and one blast from the gun can easily finish off your target. But they come with heavy recoil, thus making it harder to shoot at the same same spot twice. Whereas I think the assault rifles in the game are poorly represented because firing in short bursts takes forever to kill an enemy whereas going full auto will result in a massive weapon spread leading to a significant wastage of precious rounds. And my favorite weapon in the game has to be the bows and arrows because they offer up a robust combat experience and one well placed arrow between your enemy's head will result in an instant kill. The weapons in the game can then be further customized or improved which requires a number of salvageable parts that you can easily come across and are found inside the wooden crates spread evenly throughout the game world. You can also opt to loot the bodies of dead enemies which rewards you with extra salvage and much needed ammunition. Each and every weapon upgrade requires you to have salvageable parts which can then be traded for some incremental upgrades which ultimately aids you in combat. And then there are collectibles in the game in the form of journals and ancient artifacts. Collecting a journal further fleshes out the lore of the game world which contains the recollection of either past events or current ones. These journals are fully voice acted which makes the trouble of finding these a joy. There are certain areas in the game where you will come across items from the past and forgotten period and these items are a valuable find because they reveal a bit of historical backstory linked with that particular item. The enemies present in the game are well equipped to take you down and the enemies are divided as ranged ones and melee ones. In case of ranged ones, they mostly wield guns and bows and arrows. They mostly concentrate their fires on your location and they will more than often flank your positions, thus making things difficult for you. Then there are the ones who charge towards your position with a pair of sharp blades and they must be disposed of quickly before they get too close for comfort. Whereas some enemies in the game carry a hardened metallic shield that blocks all of your shots so in order to bring these ones down you need to avoid their frontal attacks and then combining your speed with quick dodge maneuvers so as to open an opportunity for a counter. This will leave them vulnerable to your attacks and all it takes is a series of well placed shots to end their lives. In the game are present a number of set pieces that take the action and adventure to new heights. For example, you will be rolling down hill full speed to save your life from the oncoming debris of a wrecked plane. If you are caught in this debris, you will meet your end and then in one of the sections you will be parachuting your way downwards, descending gradually with a crazy speed. Sections like these are often injected from time to time to make the experience more robust and coherent. There are also some sections where you will have to solve puzzles to progress forward, which in turn adds a little complexity to the already well established tomb raiding formula. The creative addition that injects a whole new dimension of freshness in the game's lore is the presence of supernatural samurai soldiers named as Oni who are terrifying and are extremely violent. And taking an army of them requires you to be quick with your movements and liberal with your firearms. The developers of the game drew some inspiration for these from couple of last uncharted games that also during the ending introduced some kind of supernatural element. The Oni are represented very well and they add to the mystery of the game world and its lore. Tomb Raider ultimately is a solid game made by developers who know exactly how to cater to the modern audience's need and they provided that and succeeded with flying colors. So the time has come to end this experience video and for the record, Thank you Crystal Dynamics and Square Enix for this wonderful piece of art and thank you to all the viewers of this video from the bottom of my heart.